Hi, I am Sarah Lando and I am a guitarist in New York City. I give guitar lessons in Brooklyn and also online at Lesson Face. You don't need to start on an acoustic guitar. A lot of people come to me and they're like, here's my acoustic and it's beat up and the action's real high and they're like, you know, this is given to me. You don't need to start on that. If you can, start on an electric. Uh, the strings are much thinner, much thinner. This is a size eight string. Acoustics start on 12. So people come up to me and they're like, I, yeah, I played in, you know, five years ago and I gave up. I'm like, well, let me see that beater you have. And okay, wow, well, you know, these strings are really heavy. Um, you don't want to give up. If you can get a chance to get a cheap electric guitar just to play around with, amplify it, you won't give up. You'll come back. You can get through all these chords, including bar chords. It's a lot easier. When I teach at Girls Rock Camp, the little girls, we start them all on electric guitars um, so they don't give up. If you have an acoustic and you really want to use it, you will be doing twice the amount of work, which is great. Um, if you, if you want. You can also get an acoustic electric, which has the neck very much like an electric guitar, and then there's a hollow body here. And make sure to stretch out your fingers. I do this one. We walk around usually with our fingers pretty cupped, you know, but on guitar we need spread. Um, so usually between these guys I stretch them out so I can get lots of room. This is a finger exercise that I give all my beginner students. We line them all up in a row, and we're going to go one, two, three, four. If, then you look at your hand and you make sure it has an arch. We're gaining independence per finger. Usually the pinky is wild and leaving the room or something, or you get this claw. We call it the parakeet claw. We don't want that. We want a nice arch. I'm just going one at a time. So you don't want this? If you know a D, E minor, which is everyone's favorite because it's very easy, and a G. There's also two ways to play a G. There's the G where you only use one finger here, and then there's what I call the rock G, which is all of them. It's a little thicker, heavier. We're gonna do this G. This is for rock, pop, punk. This is what you want. But how do you get around and what's the best way? So we're going to look at two chords that go together in songs all the time, thousands of songs. Um, and we're gonna start simple, and that's an E minor to a G. E minor to a G. We have an anchor note, and an anchor note is a finger that does not leave the neck. Here it's my index finger. Why is that helpful? So you can look away, you can sing to the audience, you can practice playing without being glued to that hand. So after you get used to going from your E minor to your G, I want you to look away. I want you to look at your right hand. Luckily, these two chords involve hitting every string. So I'm looking over here, and I call this the blind technique. We're just letting this do its own thing and we're developing muscle memory. Okay, you can stop and try that for a little while. We're gonna try a little a, one that's a little bit harder and that's the D to the G. So for D, we have four strings. To get from a D to a G, we have an anchor note of a third finger. So 
So what you probably just heard is I played for the D chord way too many strings, which is why you want to stare at the right hand, get a good D sound, and then switch. Then go back. See already this sounds like a song, right? I, I hear I hear a clash song, I hear a Rolling Stone song. Thousands and thousands of songs are three chords and we're doing two of them. The point is you don't want to do D like this. It sounds muddy. Um, it sounds, you know, that's the difference between hearing someone play a D to a G and then you try and you're like, why do I not sound like that person? It's usually this. It's that extra strings, it's that mud, I call it. That's why you don't sound like the guitarist you want. It's almost always the right hand and extra notes being rung out. So there are some progressions that you can play that will link a whole bunch in a row. I suggest trying these and think about in the early stages your strumming will still sound a little bit like a cheese grater, right? We can fix that. But what we're worrying about in the beginning is this hand, muscle memory, repetition. So I go into G, here's our E minor, back to G. So how do you get like that? I tell my students to put aside like a half hour. Um, sometimes I'll just like get a Netflix show, anything, half hour that you don't, a show you don't care about, it's even better because you can just zone out and just get your fingers to do things automatically. You're gonna need that later because if you're singing or I'm talking, that's doing two different things at once. And this one has to be autopilot. Think about when you're drive, you're learning to drive or stick shift or even just a normal car. When you first learn, there's no way you could sing and drive. Then after a while, you don't even know you're driving and you're singing, you know, the radio's on. Um, that's how it is with, you know, guitar first. You, this has to be like, so easy like you're driving a car. That's how people get from playing chords to singing effortlessly. If your plan is to be a singer while you play, start soon. I have a lot of students that come to me and say, I've been playing, you know, you know, I've been, I'm a good guitarist, so I've been playing for eight years or something, but I can't play and sing, and I wish I had started early on getting used to that. This is the way to do it. Um, first practice by blindly looking away from that hand, and then also practice repetition, like autopilot, like, a, like you're driving a car. Mm -hmm.